book has evolved in so many different ways um, since it began. And I was hoping that we might be able to start with a little sort of brief history from, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the scrolls onwards. Um, I mean, where would you where would you say the book was born? Um, great. Well, that's a, that's a fantastic question. Thanks everybody for being here. Thanks so much to the Idler for ha for having me. Well, I think it could really pick up on on what Mark's been saying. Really, the book uh, then called the Codex uh, marches in step with Christianity. So it's a it's a Christian form. And it was really interesting to hear Mark talk about the kind of spiritual and interior dimensions of this. One of the ways I have thought about it is that Christianity, uh, biblical Christianity, had an immediate need to um, understand its scriptures as, uh, in some sense, a sort of amalgam, not a series, not, not, a, not a narrative with a beginning and an end, but something where the Old Testament or the Hebrew scriptures prefigured or needed to be read alongside the Gospels. Um, the Gospel account in one Gospel needed to be looked at alongside another one. Um, so it was a kind of reading which uh, required a particular sort of technology to support it because you can't do that with a scroll. So mm. a scroll is a long, long roll. Uh, that, you, that you move along, it's got, a, it's got a roller, you've got a roller in each hand and you're taking up uh, from the fr from the complete end. It's like it's like an old analog um, photographic film or something. Okay, like so, so, can, we, can we just yeah. go back to the scroll? Because um, I must admit, I hadn't really thought about scrolls until I read your book because I thought they went up like that. But of course they go like that, don't they? No, and, they um, so, so they go horizontally, yeah. They go horizontally. And if you were, um, you know, if you were sort of, uh, a contemporary of Socrates in ancient Athens. Um, these things hadn't been invented; they didn't exist. No. Nope. Um, and you would go, to, but they did have bookshops or scroll shops. I don't know. Um, and and these scrolls would be sort of lined up, but they had some sort of cover on them. Or I mean, how did you know which scroll was which? Yeah. So a scroll, a scroll was a, a you know a rolled up um, piece of papyrus usually, um, so a plant material, uh, and they had a, a string around them to keep them tied up together and a label usually on the string, so that told you what the what, what the text was. And you're absolutely right, in the time of Socrates, most written documents, um, be they sort of government documents or literary or religious or philosophical works, most of those were quite easily managed by, the, by, by scroll technology. They didn't really need anything different. It may have, uh, it may have um, kept a, a sort of cap on their length because a scroll can only be a certain, a certain length. So some of those biblical books, where there are one and two, you know, Kings one, Kings two, um, they're not really two separate books. They're probably a break in, in, in scrolls before, before, the, before the codex, uh, before the book. But the co codex um, uh, was invented. You and Mark are saying. So, if I <laughs> just to understand this properly, um, the codex was invented as a sort of a compilation album. Um, it was it, the book had to come into had, the book had to come into being in order to contain this kind of like multiplicity of different texts yeah. alongside one another, but still in the unity of a thing called the Bible. Yeah, so I think most, you know, most inventions in, in, in all fields need two things. They need the inventiveness of the inventor, but they also need uh, people to appreciate that that is something that they want and that is an improvement on what they've already got. So it's not just enough to be inventive. You've got to persuade people that they want it. So it's hard for us to say this is when the book was invented. Yeah. Uh, this is the date. But we can certainly see um, that as the Christian era era. Uh, proceeds, um, book adoption as opposed to scrolls increases really substantially in Christian areas. Mm. Um, uh, and that's different actually for, um, for, for, uh, for, for Judaism, as, as Mark was talking about. Mm. So if you, um, as many people on this call will know, if you look at um, uh, 
uh, a Torah uh, in, in a synagogue, it will be in a scroll, it will still be in a scroll form. Judaism is not, I mean, it sort of is a religion of the book as in it's a religion of writing, but it's not really a religion quite of the codex, it's still a religion of the scroll. And whereas you might think differently about Islam, which is which is still primarily an, a, 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 tra a tradition of oral transmission of the scriptures. That's why learning the Quran um, you know, in a madrasa or wherever is such an important part of Islamic teaching. So it's Christianity in the book uh, that 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 kind of move move ahead. And I, and as I was suggesting, I think it's because Christianity has some particular sort of reading needs, um, some needs to be able to look up different parts of the book at the same time, um, refer back and forth, not necessarily read from beginning to end, but sort of drop in and find the bit that you want. And these are all things that the book can do that the scroll uh, really, really can't. 